All right, guys. Uh, Josh Brown here from Cameron uh, Dunlap uh, organization or CameronDirect.com. Uh, and tonight we're here to talk about how you can maximize your results with the Vacant House Data Feed and start doing more deals fast. And I'm really excited to have you here on tonight's call because, you know, what we're going to be talking about tonight is how to use this tool, which is an amazing resource for you as an investor, to find more deals and to cash more checks fast. So if that's what you're excited to learn, you're in the right place, and I'm really excited to have you here. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. You know, this session actually uh, started, it sort of developed uh, at our Vacant House and Foreclosure Summit event, which is um, held a few times a year throughout the country. And it's one of the sessions that attendees have really loved the most uh, at that event. Uh, and when we're there, we do an advanced training on using the Vacant House and, uh, data feed. And... And so we figured, you know, uh, if we're having such good success at the Vacant House and Foreclosure Summit, teaching the Vacant House data feed to people and showing them how they can use it to do more deals fast, maybe we should take that training and give it to the members, you guys, so that you can take your business to the next level using it too. And, and there's so many things to know about the Vacant House data feed. There's so much to learn. Uh, it's a simple tool, but there's just a lot of power within it. So uh, it's good to be able to sit down with an expert, someone who uses it in their own business uh, and someone who was there from the moment uh, it was conceptualized and developed, who can walk you through the nooks and crannies and show you how to get the most out of it. So that's what this training is about, and that's what we're going to do here tonight for you. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to take a second and introduce you to my why. Um, I've been investing since I was 18 years old. I'm now uh, days away from turning 36. And um, I actually started investing with my girlfriend, who you can see is now my wife in the screen there. Uh, and at the time, I was you know, like a 16-year-old kid mowing lawns uh, for a living. I, I basically went to high school and had my own little lawn business on the side. And one of the lawns that, that I had uh, as an account was my girlfriend's lawn. And I remember as clear as day, uh, I was out there mowing the lawn, shirt off, had a tattoo on my arm. I, I was actually 17 because uh, I got my first tattoo when I was 17. And uh, my girlfriend's father, who's like a 6'4 Cuban giant of a man, walks out and says, if you're going to be with my daughter, you're not going to be mowing lawns for a living. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, so what do I do? And he's like, well, why don't you come with me and I'll show you what I do and see what you think. And so the next day he packed my girlfriend, he packed me in his car, and he drove us uh, into downtown Atlanta, which is where we lived at the time. And he basically showed us what he was and what he was was a real estate investor. He was buying old fixer-upper homes, vacant houses, and he was fixing them up and then reselling them for thousands and thousands of dollars in profit. And he showed us how he did it. And then at the end of that day, he said, and if you guys want to learn how to do it, I'd be happy to mentor you through it too. And we were like, okay, sure. You know, We were 17, 18 years old, and we literally had no fears. So we jumped right in. And that summer, my girlfriend and I flipped our first property and made $34,000 and split the money right down the middle. And it, we haven't looked back since. So uh, I got started at an early age, but because I was forced in by a loving, caring man who I now am happy to call father-in-law uh, and, and my girlfriend, now wife, Angelina, uh, and I have two beautiful daughters, Ava and Addison. And then you can see our third little furry daughter there, uh, Stella, right in the middle. And they're the reason that I do what I do. They are the reason that I'm on this call here with you. They're the reason that I work so hard and I dedicate my life to helping other folks do well. Um, I do it for them. I do it because I love them and I want to give them every opportunity uh, that I had or didn't have uh, growing up. And, and so that's why I'm here. And, and what I would suggest is you find your why too. And some of you have it. I've got a picture. The picture you're looking at right now is literally – on my desk in front of me right now on my on my board, my bulletin board. And I would suggest you put your why in front of you every day because when things get tough, you've got to have a reason to push through it. You know, nothing great comes without a little bit of adversity. And if you have a reason to push through that adversity, uh, you're going to you're going to keep growing as a business or as a person uh, and your profits are going to keep growing uh, as well. So let me go ahead and get this out of the way so that you can focus on what's most important. I have nothing to sell you today, nothing. If you came here expecting to buy something, I have bad news. You can't buy anything today. There's nothing for sale. 
okay? I'm here to help you get the most out of this program so you can do more deals and cash more checks. So you're not going to have to wait around to the end and wonder when the shoe's going to drop, when the sale's going to come. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to train you today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Also, we're going to be doing a lot. We're going to be doing a live Q&A session at the end of this training. So if you want to go ahead and submit your questions through the system, right here, there's a questions tab on your uh, GoToWebinar control panel. You can send in your questions, and I'm going to answer as many as I can, time permitting. Um, so start submitting them now. Keep them coming throughout the entire training. If something I say something that uh, spurs a question, don't hold them off till the end because there's going to be a lot of questions coming in at the end, and I, I would suggest you just get them in the line when you can. I'll start at the top and work my way down uh, when we get to that session in this presentation. All right. So the vacant house data feed is going to give you unparalleled access to bank-owned verified vacant houses. And by the way, we go through this every time we give this training because – Many folks don't even realize how many different types of leads they get access to, what information they get access to within the vacant house data feed. But you're going to get access to bank-owned verified vacant houses, privately owned verified vacant houses, out-of-state owned verified vacant houses, LLC and Inc. owned verified vacant houses, uh, high equity deals, over leveraged houses, uh, NCOA addresses when available. We don't always know that, but when it's available, we can give it to you. Phone numbers when available. Estimated mortgage balance when available, and matching and non-matching site and tax assessor address properties. Okay, now matching site and tax assessor address records represent a dead end in your competitor's eye and will discourage them. This is important to know. People want to know why do you make a difference between uh, matching and non-matching? Well, it's because matching site and tax assessor records discourage people because they are they think, oh, I'm not going to be able to find the owner. But for us, we get excited when we see matching records because as Bacon House Data Feed members, we have access to tools that allow us to find them and separate ourselves from the competition. In fact, one of the filters we're about to discuss allows you to focus ex exclusively on this type of lead if you'd like to. Okay. Now, getting started is easy, and I'll walk you guys through this. And again, I'm going to do a live uh, walkthrough and Q&A at the end of this, but I want to show you sort of the step-by-step, -step, how to log in, how to get going. You may have seen this before, uh, but it'll be really fast, I promise. So logging in, you're going to go to realestatewealthnetwork.com, and when you go there, you're going to log in with your username and password. Uh, once you log in, you're going to hit the dashboard, which is nice and pretty and easy to understand. You can see the programs are on the left, messages are on the right, your support is across the top. And we're going to scroll down, and you'll see the uh, programs you have access to. You're seeing my account here, so I have access to everything. And, of course, to open the Vacant House Data Feed, you would just click on the circled little image there of Vacant House Data Feed. Once you do, it's going to open up to the main search page, and it's going to be the first thing you see. Right here, the search page is going to show you your home area. You can see I live in Charleston, South Carolina, so you're seeing uh, – the coast there of South Carolina, sort of where my default search setting is is at. And as you scroll down uh, to look at your leads, and again, we'll go through this live in a minute, you're going to notice that more and more properties will load. And the reason we do that is because we want to make sure that um, the system is loading data for you quickly. And if we have it load every single property in your area at once, then it'll take forever for your screen to populate. But if we load the properties as you scroll 20 at a time, it does it instantly right on, uh, right on the fly. So that's just a factor of us trying to optimize your experience within the system. Um, so if you go on there and you see there's 1,200 vacant houses in your area, but you're only seeing 20 blips on the screen, just keep scrolling down. You're going to notice every time you do, it's going to load more and load more and load more. And when you scroll back up and look at the map, it's going to look like this with tons and tons of properties right there at your fingertips. You can also zoom in and see where the properties are. This is pretty cool because it allows you to zoom in and sort of do some competitive analysis or some research on your areas. What streets are hot? Where are all the vacant houses? And then if you know your area and you know where people are rehabbing houses, you can kind of dig in and find a little farm area or target area that you might want to market to. You also have access to filters so that you can sort of tailor the leads to your needs. And what I mean by that is you may be going only after condos or you may not want to invest in condos at all. We've given you the ability to include or exclude all these types of lead, bank owned, bank owned, entity, privately owned, out of state owner, no phone number, over leveraged. If you only want to deal with over, over leveraged properties, 
you want to make sure those are included, right? And you can even go over to the equity tab right there. You can see it right in the center of the screen on the right center. And you can sort of move those scroll bars to the percentage of equity you want to have left in the property. It's, it's really, really powerful tool. And then you can start reviewing leads. Uh, once you've picked your area and you know where you're going to going to be going, you can target in using a zip code and or um, state, county, or city. And here I did a zip code search, and you can see it loads instantly all the properties within that area that are uh, verified vacant. So once you've run a search, you can save all the vacant house leads you're interested in and uh, in a working on, which allows you to organize leads as you work them. You can also create a smart driving map with the quickest route from property to property, saving you and or your bird dog even more time and resources. And that's key because the vacant house data feed is sort of it has not sort of it. It has literally transformed the way we use bird dogs. Uh, if if you're currently using bird dogs in your business, you might be telling them to hey, go find me leads, and I'll give you five to fifteen dollars for every lead you bring back, and you have pictures, and you tell me you have the house, and like yada yada yada. Well, now we're not just sort of asking our bird dogs to be deal finders. We're also going to be asking them to be um, scouts. You know, here are 20 vacant houses. Go drive them. Take pictures. Tell me about them. Make sure they're vacant. You know, all these different questions and come back to me. And by the way, on that drive, if you see other vacant houses, let me know and I'll pay you for those too. So we're actually making our our bird dogs more valuable to us, right? Uh, and it's really it really is a, a powerful thing. You're going to get all the information you need within the system. So. I'm going to go back a screen here. You can see we have all these properties right here. And this is, you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different properties. And they're done in columns across. And you can see the property address, the zip code, last purchase date, estimated market value. So based on all this information, I'm starting to look at it. And I'm thinking, okay, well, let's go ahead and look at the details for the top property. And, and uh, if you'll see there, there's four icons to the left of every single property address. And that's a property details page, a bookmark page, a push lead button and a print button. So I'm sorry, a property details button, bookmark button, push lead button, and print button. So if I wanted to see details about the page, I would just click the little folder icon next to the, the uh, address there. It takes me to the property detail page, which looks just like this, okay? And it's all the information you need to start making an, a really uh, powerful judgment about this property. Is it something we want to go after? We have an image of the property, which is taken from Google. We have uh, the owner's information and name. We have a phone number. Now, not all properties in the vacant house state of feed have phone numbers, but when the phone number is available, we can supply that to you, and that's powerful stuff. When you think about that, right now, instantly, if this lead, this is a couple months old, this picture, but if this lead was brand new to the system, you could literally be the first person to contact the seller by just picking up the phone and calling him. And how much does it cost you? Nothing. It costs you zilch to pick up the phone and call somebody and just say, hey, I, by way of public record, learned that your house might be vacant. I'd love to help you get rid of it. Okay? You're going to get the estimated market value. You're going to get calculated mortgage balance when that is available. When it's not, you know, we can't give you information we don't have, but when it's available, we will give it to you. And you're going to be able to figure out how much equity is available in the house. And I don't know about you, but anytime I see $328,000 in equity, I get excited. Okay, So that's what the property details page is going to show you. And again, at the top, you can see you could instantly order a skip trace. You could instantly bookmark it, push the lead to uh, iFlip, or you could print this information if you wanted to print it out and print out all the good ones so you can go call them later or follow up with them or, or do whatever you do in your business. You're also going to... Um, see that we give you NCOA addresses or national change of address information when available. And this means no further digging. This is valuable info and it's right at your fingertips. And, and here's the thing, you know, we used to only be able to get this information by, you know, having to pay the money to send an envelope and ask for the return address and all that stuff. But now within the system, if there's a national change of address filed on file in the United States, we're going to be able to give it to you. And that means you can instantly get the address of where the owner is. And this in and of itself is easily worth the cost of this system. I mean, this will save you over the course of a year 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, and time and effort. And, you know, just think about how long it takes to get the mail back and then have to hand sort it. And this is all digital for you. It's all done right there. And when you click load more, so you can see right here at the bottom of every uh, property detail page, there's a big blue button that says load more. When you click it, it's going to pop some information down there for you. And what it's popping is valuable information that helps you make decisions about this property. And it's going to show you information like cash buyers in the area. And you'll be able to see right there on the map if there are cash buyers in the area, private lenders in the area, comparable data in the area. And you can also make notes on the properties as well. And this is cool because what it allows us to do, I mean, think about this. If I'm looking at a property that has $320,000 in equity and, uh, you know, I can instantly without having to, you know, go subscribe to three other services, I can scroll down here and I can look at the comparable sales data to that property just by clicking load more and going to the comparables tab and clicking on it. It'll show it to me right there. All the comparables, all these red dots that you see in the center of the screen, those are comparable properties to our target property. All right, so I can instantly decide this is probably a good deal or this is one I want to pass on. I can also see if there are private lenders in the area. Now, why would that be helpful? Well, because if I know there are people in the area who are lending money on real estate, that's a powerful thing because now I know that there's probably money in the area. I have contact. And if I'm a member of the private lender data feed, I have the contact information. But whether or not you're a member of the cash buyer data feed or the private lender data feed, you're going to see that they're there. Um, you just won't get the detailed information for how to contact them unless you're a member of that program. And if you're not a member of the program, when you click on the cash buyer tab or the private lender tab, it, there should be a, a link that you could click back to and, and get started there as well. Um, but we're trying to make everything as easy and we're trying to put all the tools in front of you so that you can make – uh, decisions on your leads and decisions on your business uh, right from one screen. I mean, that's ultimately what we want to do. So it's easy, it's fast, and it's powerful. Now, once you leave the search tab, you can go to the My Save Lead tabs. And in My Save Leads, you can save the leads you want to market to and are working on. So to think of this, um, <clears throat> you might think of it like this. When I log in to uh, look for new leads to market to, Tomorrow morning, I'm going to log in. I'll spend most of my time on the search page. But when I log in the day after to go ahead and get my mailing sent out, I'll probably go to my save leads. Okay. Or if I want to log in and follow up with some mailings I sent out last week, I'd go to my save leads. So my save leads are the leads that I think are special, the ones that I want to go after. And every time I'm in the search tab and I see something that's good, I hit save and it pushes it to the my save leads section. Okay. <clears throat> With my labels, you can now easily track specific mailings and keep better tabs on your leads. And this is really important and really cool. This is a brand new feature, uh, but it's going to allow you to start creating labels for some of your marketing campaigns. So you could do a, you know, South Side label or North Side label or um, East Side One, East Side Spring, East Side Spring Two. So what you're doing is labeling these things so that you can go back later and say, oh, I mailed them in Spring of 16 or, you know. I mailed them in April and then May and then June. You could label each time you go after that group so that you can be smarter about your marketing. And smart marketing equals less dollars spent and more dollars made. And that's what we're trying to help you do here. <clears throat> Next, you have the My Account tab. Now, under My Account, you can actually customize your setup. Um, you, you can see right there, once you go to My Account, if you go to the default search area, you can change your default search state and county. And why this is important is because <clears throat> every time you log into the vacant house data feed, you're going to be brought to the search page. And the search page has to have a location to start looking for leads for you. And it's always going to look to your default search setting. And you can change this a thousand times a day if you want to. Um, but most of us only have one or two markets that we invest in. So you come here, you change it to your state, your county that you want to look for, and you hit save. And then from now on, when you log in, it'll show you that first. Um, you can also link your vacant house data feed account to, uh, find the seller, which is our skip trace service that we offer. And it's unbelievably powerful and, and unbelievably affordable, uh, when you're a member of the vacant house data feed. Um, and also you can connect your account to iFlip real estate, which is an all in one, 
uh, real estate business automation platform that allows you to manage your business so you can do more deals more often in less time. And, and we've really developed every single one of our tools, whether it's a vacant house data feed, cash buyer data feed, private lender data feed, unlimited skip trace, find the seller, all of them. They all integrate back with iFlip as the hub so that you can manage your entire business from iFlip. So we thought, why not just make it easy for our customers? And if they have an iFlip account, you can easily push your leads from the vacant house data feed to your iFlip account by hitting the push leads button next to any lead you want. It's, it's very, very simple. You can also set up alerts and I love this because, you know, I'm busy. I've always got a hundred different things going at once and uh, I've sort of mastered that the art of, of managing all those things. But I love it when I get alerts to my phone where it's like, Hey, this deal just came in, go check it out. Uh, so you can set up email alerts or text message alerts, uh, one, the other, both, um, within the system so that when, new leads come up in your area with your parameters. You can see right there, the parameters I've got set. Um, you'll be notified and that's important because the first person to the party always has the biggest advantage. You know, they get to choose where they want to sit. So, uh, or stand. <laughs> uh, so I love this alerts feature and I would highly recommend if you haven't done that yet, you go do it now. Um, or not now, but after the call, uh, because it really is a powerful tool. Now tasks allow you to set reminders and finalize your marketing plans. And, you know, I'm a marketing guy. That's what I do. That's, that's what I'm best at. And, um, I, I love this tool because it allows me to remind myself to stay on task. So you can create tasks. You can put the name in, you can pick start and end dates. Uh, you can set reminders, email and text, uh, and then you can add them to the calendar. So if you know, you want to send out 50 postcards a week for the next eight weeks, then take 20 minutes tomorrow, come in here and set Monday reminder, send email number one, then go to the following Monday, send or not email, send mailing number one. And then the following uh, uh, Monday, send mailer number two, the following Monday, send mailer number three, and just go ahead and set it up there, set the reminder, set the end and start time and add the task because then it's going to be uh, a little push on your back, you know, a little, Hey, don't forget, do this thing. Because the truth is with marketing and, and anything in business, if you don't have a plan and you don't stick to the plan, your results are certain and they're going to be few and far between. Uh, however, if you create a plan and you are dedicated to that plan, you're going to see results. You're going to see market results and you're going to love them and you're going to have enough to be able to, to, to get information from those results, uh, make some tweaks and then get even more results the next time. But you've got to stick to the plan and, and using this tasks feature and we've got it in every single one of our tools. It, allows you to sort of give yourself a little bit of self uh, accountability, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Next we have the marketing tools tab and in marketing tools, you choose who you want to market and how you want to market to them. And this is key because there's lots of ways to contact these sellers. Um, well, there's a couple great ways anyway. Uh, and within the marketing tool, you can see we have templates, we have phone scripts, we have mailing lists that you're creating as you're going through your leads. Uh, there's a marketing history so you can see what you've done in the past and you can go in and see the different types of mailers we've got like letters or postcards. We've got letter templates in the system. We've got postcard templates in the system. And these aren't just like random templates that we've never used. I and mean, these are, these are letters and postcards that Cam himself has used in his business over and over again to get the deals uh, in that he's doing right now. <clears throat> now, one thing, <clears throat> pardon my coffee. One thing that you should know is we're, uh, constantly adding and we'll be adding new marketing pieces to the system as well. So we're currently working on a couple new ones we're going to be putting in the system and we're going to start adding them over time as well. So you can, you know, keep an eye out for that. Um, but these letter templates and postcard templates, they really work. I mean, one of our students, John from Alabama, got an 8% response rate and three deals under contract using this exact postcard template I just showed you. He wrote in and he said, we got three properties under contract in the first week of marketing to the vacant house data feed list. They only sent 350 postcards, by the way, which is not a huge amount, but hey, that's still good. And they got an 8% res response rate and three deals under contract with one mailing. And see, that's the power of the vacant house data feed. You're able to target extremely motivated sellers that not many other people are going after or most people are afraid to go after. 
and you're getting large response rates like this 8%. And it's not the first time I've seen response rates like that or higher from folks who are mailing the vacant house data feed. An added benefit of using the built-in mail manager, by the way, is the ultra-low direct mail cost that we're able to pass on to you from our mail house. And that's something that if you haven't heard Cam say before, uh, that's not a profit center for us. We don't make anything by allowing you to use the one-click mail house stuff. We don't mark that up so that we can make money in the middle. We literally pass on our uh, distributor cost to you because we want to be able to give you a one-stop solution. And – um, and because of that, you're going to notice that the mail costs are incredibly low. Uh, and you may be able to, you know, patch it together and do it on your own for a little bit less, but to have someone doing it all for you at the click of a button, I've never seen it, uh, less expensive. So, um, so that is an added benefit as well. Some of the vacant house homeowner information also includes phone number data. We've talked about that. Uh, and it is important to make a good first impression when calling vacant house homeowners. You and now you have access to a phone script for contacting vacant house leads, bank seller leads, and incoming seller leads. So <clears throat> what I want you to realize is that within the system, not only are we giving you the postcard templates and the letter templates so you can start doing mailings right away, but we're also going to be giving you scripts so that if you want to start calling people on the phone or they call you back from these mailings, you now have a script that you can follow that allows you to not sound like a newbie, quote unquote newbie, or sound like someone who's never done this before, but instead sound like a confident investor who can help them. Uh, and that's – it really is really important when you're talking to someone that you sound like you can help them because that's what they need is help, right? Now, one question we get sometimes is, is every lead inside the vacant house data feed a great deal? And you know, the vacant house data feed is a powerful tool that uses our finely tuned proprietary algorithm and multiple data sources to identify vacant properties across the country. No, not every single vacant house in the vacant house data feed is for sale, and not every house that's for sale is a good deal. I mean that's just the law of the land. Not every probate uh, lead in your probate list is going to be a good deal. Not every out-of-state owner is a motivated seller, Okay, but that's a good targeted list to go after, and that's exactly what the vacant house data feed is. It's a high-quality targeted list that your competition is not going after. Um, you know, the amount of people who go after out-of-state owners or, or uh, disgruntled landlords or absentee owners uh, – I just said that out-of-state uh, – or probates is much higher than the folks who are, who are really focusing on some of the best leads, which are vacant houses. And the vacant house data feed is an automated solution. It's one of the least expensive, high-quality lead sources available to investors right now, and it's constantly enhanced uh, and becoming more powerful every day. The system, we're working our tail off to make it better and better. And if you've been a user for any period of time and you've submitted um, suggestions to us, you've no doubt noticed that uh, those suggestions are handled quickly and updated the system. We don't just update like once a year. We're not like Microsoft where we can only make changes like once every three years to our software. We make them on the fly. So if you have a great idea, we get our crack team working on it, and they, our programmers are in-house, and they are awesome. And they get that stuff. If we think it's a valuable idea, uh, they get that stuff implemented immediately. And 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 one of the great examples of us constantly enhancing uh, the system are the brand new heat maps feature. Now, this all new heat maps feature within the vacant house data feed will allow you to do some advanced market research that your competition simply cannot do. Uh, they can't use a tool like this because they don't have the vacant house data feed. And our competitors aren't thinking about heat map tools like this. And, uh, and for that reason, this gives you a, a huge competitive edge. And to use this uh, heat maps tool, by the way, you'll go to the marketing tools tab within the system right there. So I'm showing you a picture of the screen. Click on marketing tools. You can see we're in there. And then at the bottom of the marketing tools tab on the far left of the uh, screen there, you see here it says heat maps. You simply click on that. And once you're in there, you can easily use the heat map. Now, heat maps will allow you to research your local markets. Uh, you can start zooming in or zooming out, looking at different areas, or you can use the tool to research nationally what markets are hot, right? So you can literally in five or 10 minutes go to 10, 20, 30 different states here and see which markets are hot, which ones have more vacant houses, which ones uh, what I want to invest in. If I'm not going to invest in my local market, what's the best market to invest in nationally? I actually had a student who I met uh, recently at a vacant house, data, uh, vacant house foreclosure summit event, 
email me and say, Hey Josh, you know, we talked at the event and I'm thinking about going into a different market. And he gave me like five different uh, markets that he wanted me to tell him which one's the best one. And it's, you know, that's dangerous because I don't know what the best market is for you to go into, but here's how I would do the research myself. And the first tool I pointed into was this heat map tool because it allows you to see what's going on on a national level. And then, so let's say we're going to look at Texas. I can pull up Texas on the heat map and instantly look. And here we can see right now I'm looking at this map. I can tell that there is a ton of action around Houston. I mean, look at the vacant house leads in and around Houston. If I'm a real estate investor, that is exciting to me, right? Or San Antonio, Austin. I mean, that's really, really cool. And if I uh, would have closed out that little Xbox, we could see what was around Dallas too. But it's really exciting to see because, uh, you know, without having to procure really expensive information or call and talk to 20 different uh, realtors in that area, I've now made virtual investing one step easier. Right, because now I can do market research without leaving my desk. It's, it really is a powerful tool. Plus, we just introduced the custom mailing labels for the self mailing solution. So, if you're if you're the kind of person who likes to do your own mailings, you don't want to have the system do it. Um, we've got that option right within the system, and you've probably used it if this is you. Uh, and uh, for a while now, we've had folks saying, "Hey, it'd be nice if we could change the font color on those labels, or if we could change what they say and how they say them." Uh, so, right here within system you can instantly choose which Avery type of label you've got you can see right there it says Avery 5160 but once you hit that that box it opens up all the different types of every labels you could have you scroll down there you can change the font uh, to whatever you want you could change the colors and and really customize your piece because everything on your piece matters on your mailing piece matters all right so now that we've gone through some of the most important features of the vacant house data feed and I've walked you through sort of how to log in how to use it and that kind of stuff. Um, let's get to some of your questions. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start the question and answer session off here with uh, some of the most frequently asked questions that we get um, when I'm doing these sessions, either at live events or I'm training um, folks one-on-one -on -one with this stuff. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions you're going to be asking, and I think some of those questions I'm going to address here. But if you have additional questions, if you have follow-up questions, please feel free to submit them through the chat feature on your screen uh, or the questions feature on your uh, webinar uh, control panel. And I will do my best to get to all of them after the call is over. Um, and I'll do it as you know time permitting. So uh, you know, don't be afraid to go ahead and start putting your questions in there uh, now, uh, and we'll get to them when we get to them. Next question, how are homes verified as vacant? Well, <clears throat> the answer is it, they're verified through our finely tuned proprietary algorithm and multiple data sources. Uh, we <coughs> worked long and hard, pardon my cough, uh, on developing a proprietary algorithm that we can't share, obviously, every single detail of because it's proprietary uh, and multiple data sources and through that, uh, we're able to identify vacant properties across the country. Uh, and it's a, this is a tool, again, that Cam uses in his business, I use in my business, and, and many, many of our students are using their business with great success. Um, and that's, that's how we're verifying them as vacant. Uh, another question that we get a lot, how often is the vacant house data feed updated? And the answer to that is monthly. We update the data monthly, and that's as fast as we can do it, and that's when you get it too. Um, as well, one thing you should know is that property leads that are no longer reported as vacant are removed from the data feed on a regular basis. Um, now, keep in mind that with the fluidity, fluidity of the market, it's possible that even though property is vacant today, doesn't necessarily mean it will be tomorrow. For instance, uh, the other day I was I had a list of 10 properties. I was driving by myself. I don't actually drive, usually do that, but I was. It was a Saturday and I had the time. So I was driving by and one of the 10 properties I noticed had a white truck in the driveway. And I was like, well, I, this house, you know, someone may see that and think, oh, this house isn't vacant. But what it was was an investor who was looking at the property at the same time I was. He had pulled up there about 20 minutes before me and was walking around looking at stuff. Uh, he hadn't bought the property yet, but it didn't look vacant because there was a car sitting in front of it. Uh, if I had waited two more weeks to go look at that property, he might have already purchased the property and was there now working on it. So – you know, there's a chance that some of that stuff happens, but again, not every house within the data feed is going to be the next big deal, but you're not every probate is going to be the next big deal either. So just if that you see that happens, you pass on and move on to the next lead. 
Next question, where <coughs> is the driving map generator located? So one of the cool features within the Bacon House data feed is we're actually made it really simple for you to give a driving map to your bird dogs or create one for yourself. And that is located uh, within the My Save Leads tab, which you can see right there on the screen, uh, right there at the right, driving map. So what you'll do is under the My Save Lead tabs here on the page, it's not showing, but there'll be you know as many properties as you've saved. And if you check each property you want to drive by and then hit driving map, it will auto generate a driving map for you to um, start driving by the properties. And it'll be step one, turn right on Main Street. Step two, turn left at the light. Step three, do this, you know, just like a Google map um, instructions. So it's very simple. And, and also there's a feature that once you've generated the driving map, you can either email it to yourself, you can text it or email it to a bird dog. Uh, so it really is a powerful tool that allows you to sort of automate this and again, run your business from a computer or, or uh, from one space. Question, where can I find old mailing lists I've created? So if you're looking for old mailing lists, like, oh, I know I got a good response back when I mailed that list in January, um, you go to the marketing tools tab and then on the left, mailing lists, and that's where you'll find your mailing lists that you've mailed in the past. Where can I find the suggestion box? So one of the things we love about you guys, our customers, is that you're full of opinions and awesome ideas. So if you have a great idea that you think, oh, it'd be great if, and that's what we always tell our, our, our employees, it's like, you know, do you hear people saying, like, I'd love it if, and then the system could do X, you know? So if you've ever thought that you said, I'd love it if your system could, whatever comes behind that, tell us about it. Tell us how that feature would help you um, those suggestions end up in front of me, in front of Cam, in front of our COO, Justin, uh, in front of our programmers. And we see those suggestions every single day and we can take the ones that we're like, oh yeah, that's brilliant. Like heat maps or like the labels that I just showed you. Uh, and we can turn them into a reality fairly quickly. Um, so the way to get those suggestions to us is to hover over the contact tab at the top, click on it, and then once you're there, you'll have the suggestion box right in front of you. It's super simple. Another thing I want to point out while I'm on the screen is that our support in our system, the customer support that we provide, is awesome. Uh, that's, I mean, I'm understating it. I, we literally bend over backwards to make sure that you guys have every answer you need. Uh, but we need to know that you need help so we can help you. So if you have questions, and you can click on that. See that where it says live support online right there? I mean, Monday through Friday, 8, uh, 8.30 a.m. to 8 p.m., you click on that live support thing, you can have an instant live chat with one of our, cu our customer support reps who can walk you through the system. Now, these support reps aren't located in, you know, India somewhere, or Pakistan. They're located in upstate New York uh, with the rest of our team under the same roof. And they're, you know, American and they're English speaking and their names really are, you know, Ellie uh, and, and, you know, and Julia. And they can answer every single question you've got on the system. They know how to use it backwards and forwards, um, you know, and they help folks just like you every day navigate these systems. I mean, if you're lost, if you don't know how to do a mailer and you need help, call in or click live support and let them walk you through it. I mean, it, we've literally... We want to help you use the system. We're happy to spend 15 minutes showing you how to do it, but you got to call us and let us know. We don't ever want you, uh, you know, leaving the system with a question unanswered. So if you've got a question, there's no question too small. Please hit us up with those questions. Question: How can I change my default search setting? We went through this earlier, but under my account, you can do it right there under default search, and you can change it to whatever. Uh, state and county you prefer as your default search setting. And again, if you market in two or three areas, if you're a virtual investor like Cam, you may uh, focus on Martin, Florida. You may also focus on, focus on uh, Steuben, New York. You may also focus on, you know, a county in, in California. Um, and you can just go in and change those settings every time you want to focus on the, on the new area. How do I save leads? Well, there's a couple options for doing that. Um, the first place you can save leads is on the main page, and you can do it right there from the little Save Leads button, which looks like a bookmark. It's the second button in, the one next to the open folder, and the one next to the three dots connected by a line. 
Um, or you can do it by the drop down menu on the right that says select from the following, and it'll one of the selections is save this lead. You can also do it from the property details page with the uh, bookmark button right there next to order a skip trace. And by the way, uh, I didn't go through this, but let's say you wanted to go after this property, you want to order a skip trace on this property, as long as you've already connected uh, your account to uh, find the seller, you literally click that button and it will order a skip trace for you right there on the spot. You don't have to go to another website, put in the property information, put in additional information. It's all done for you right there in one click. Where and how do I send direct mail out? Uh, well, there's a couple options for that too. You can do it from the main page. If you're looking at result, uh, search results and you have some selected and you would like to send them mailings, you can do it right from the drop down menu where it says select from the following and send a mailer. Okay. Uh, you can also do it from Save Leads. Again, there's a drop-down menu right there from the My Save Leads tab. And you can do it from Marketing Tools uh, under the Direct Mailer. So you can go at it either way. You pick your mailer and then pick your list or start with your list and go to your mailer. Can I edit the marketing pieces? Well, the answer to that is yes. And you have two types of marketing pieces you can edit. Uh, you have postcards, which if you go to Marketing Tools and then go to the Postcards, uh, that little pencil right there next to the postcards uh, allows you to edit the postcards. And if you go to the letter templates, the little pencil there next to each letter template will allow you to edit the letter templates. Okay. Um, next question, and this is kind of a big one. If I have a limited budget and I need to get the biggest and fastest bang for my buck, what should I do? Well, I think I should show you what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this presentation real quick. Real quick. And I'm going to walk you through um, the system live, and hopefully uh, these electronics work for me here and don't give me too much trouble. All right. So you guys should now see my uh, dashboard screen, right? So once I'm logged into my real estate wealth network dashboard, I would literally scroll down here, click on Bacon House Data Feed. <clears throat> And as that's loading, I'm just going to go here and check the questions real quick and make sure you guys are getting those in. If you've got questions, get them in. Love to have them. Good. I see you guys are adding perfect. And will someone let me know, uh, do you see me inside the Vacant House data feed right now? Can you, is that what you see on the screen? All right. That was fast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so from in the system, let me get this out of the way. Go back to search here. So within the system, as soon as I log in, this is what I see. I see the map of my home area here, uh, and I live right up in this area up here. And you can see that this month, uh, the vacant house data feed has found 1,880 vacant houses in the county of Charleston. Uh, and again, it shows you a few of the houses here. Let me go ahead and show you how the scroll feature works. So as I scroll down, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. There's already a bunch listed. See how it says loading? Now it's going to load more. Boom, and it loads more instantly. And if I keep scrolling down, I'm going to keep loading more leads. Okay, so just because you don't see a bunch at the top to start with doesn't mean they're not there. You just got to scroll down and let them load. Um, so let's see if I can go back to the top. All right. And now you can see a ton more properties have loaded. I can zoom in. All right. Uh, I can move the map around by grabbing it and moving it. So I can say like, oh, I never thought about investing down here. Let's see what's going on. See what these properties are up to. And I click on a specific property. I can see the address from the map. I can click on the property details and look here. It's going to load the property details. Boom. So for this, let's just look at this one real quick. Uh, so what I see here is a couple things. One, uh, picture of the house, which I'm looking at, which looks like a cute little beach house almost. Uh, street address, 1037 Harborview Road, Charleston, South Carolina, three bedroom, three bath, 1300 square foot, built in 2002, estimated market value 20, 25,000, calculated mortgage balance. Now, this could be $0 uh, that is completely paid off, or it could be that this is not being reported. Uh, and sometimes that information is not reported, and when it's not reported, we can't give it to you because we don't have it. Uh, but when it is, we're able to provide it. 
The last purchase price is 161. I still love the difference between 161 and 265, so that's a lot of equity there. I am kind of interested. There's no national change of address, but there is a phone number right here, okay? Uh, and I like that. Uh, so if I wanted to just give them a call real quick before I sent a mailing, I certainly could. Uh, now, let me show you the load more tab. So right here under load more, uh, if I click it, we'll watch this. It's gonna load more details down here and it loads a second map. And the second map, so you can see the property right here. And by the way, now I can see it is on a little body of water, or at least looking across the street at a little body of water there. It looks like a creek or some sort of uh, inland waterway, which no doubt leads to uh, the ocean because it's pretty close over there. But I can also see cash buyers if they're in, in the area, private lenders if they're in, in the area, and comparables. And I can see right here, look how close some comparables are. So this one's 418,000. It. Zoom in and get it. Uh, Two hundred thousand. Two thirty. Three twenty. So it looks like you know a little neighborhood over here too. So it'd be interesting to see what that house back there is. But zoom, like look at it, but. It gives you the ability to sort of get this intel on the properties, which only makes your decision making on which leads you're going to market to even better, right? Um, you can also put notes in here. You can save the lead. Once you save the lead, you can add loads to it, notes to it. So I want to save lead. I click it right here. Notes. Oops. Notes. This. Looks. Notes. Okay. Or whatever, or contacted on this date or called, no answer, you know, whatever the details were right there and hit save. So next time you come in and look at it, boom, you can see right there that you called them two months ago. You don't have to remember it now. You don't have to write it down on a little piece of paper. You don't have to create a file folder to remember your notes. You can just put it right down to the property. And that's a huge thing too. And from here, if I couldn't get a hold of seller and I couldn't find them, I could instantly click this button and order a skip trace. You can see it's, uh, Unhi or it's now white because I've already saved it. I could push this lead to my iFlip account by clicking this green button, or I could just print this detail page. And I'm the kind of guy who likes to hold them visual, so I like to hold things in my hand. So what I do is when I come through here and I find deals like this, which I like and I'm going to try to go after, I print them, and then I have a stack of 20 or 30 that I want to call. And the ones I can't call, I mail. Right. So back to the question: If I'm on a limited budget and I need the biggest bang for the buck with a vacant house data feed, what do I do? Well, first thing you need to do is go to right here where it says more filters and you need to master filters. Let me open this up and show it to you. So once you open the system, you can see here, we've got the ability to choose uh, to include or exclude many different things like condominiums. Are you targeting condominiums? Are you not? If you're not, you could exclude it. Uh, what about single family residences? Yes or no? I mean, you got to go after one, right? Bank owned, yes or no? Let's just say no for this one for some reason, although I love bank owned properties as much as anything else. Uh, out of state owners, yes or no? Matching address, non-matching address, no phone number. So what that does is say, if they do not, if the, if the lead does not provide a phone number, don't show it, exclude it, right? So if I'm on a limited budget and I need to get the train going as quickly as possible with the least amount of dollars out of my pocket, my answer for you is to build to hunt with a rifle instead of a shotgun. And, and by that I mean, you know, if you hunt with a shotgun, you have this wide spray of pebbles, right? You're gonna hit a lot of things and it's gonna shoot and make a huge mess, but you're probably gonna kill your target, right? Versus hunting with a rifle where you use one bullet, you get it clear in your sights, and you shoot and fire to one precision spot on the animal, right? Now, if you're not an animal hunter, I apologize for that example, but it's just trying to get the point across. By using list filtering, you're able to target down to a much more small, manageable, and targeted list. And with small, manageable, and targeted, we spend less money to get more results. Okay, so I'm going to say exclude those that do not have phone numbers. Okay, and you can exclude those that are over leveraged if you don't want to work with people who don't have equity in their property. You can also come over here and say, you know, I only want to work with three bedrooms. I only want to work with two bathrooms. Uh, I only want to work with properties that are above 50 and below 2 million. 
you know, whatever the square footage you're comfortable with. You can sit, literally go here and, and scroll these backwards and forwards just by moving them like that. Okay. So I'll say between 900 square feet and 5,000 square feet. All right. Uh, last purchase date. Now, why would you want to filter on last purchase date? And the reason is because usually if a house has been purchased in the last year or two, um, it might be vacant, but chances of that seller being motivated could be lower than uh, someone who's had a vacant house for, let's say, 15 years or 10 years or five years. Uh, so if you wanted to try to ratchet that down, you could literally say for, you know, greater than five years, right? I'm going to leave it at zero because I purpose Personally, I will make the phone call. It'll take 20 seconds, and uh, you know, I make 20 calls, I get a deal. I make 20 calls, I do get a deal. Once you've set your filters the way you want, you literally come over here, hit search. We went from 1,800 to 592. Okay, so now what I've got is a list of 592 leads where I can simply click on property details right here. Every single one's gonna have a phone number, so I can look. How much was it purchased for? 9,000. What's it worth? 95. I can see the property. Looks like it needs some work. That's the kind of vacant house I like to see. Uh, I would want to go double check this estimated market value. I can do that by loading more and looking at the comps. There's a ton right in that area. Very good. Okay, and then I can start calling them instantly, right on the spot. I dial the phone number. I scroll down to the notes section right here as the phone's ringing. And as I'm talking to them, I'm making notes right within here, you know. Um, Extremely motivated, uh, you know, has another aunt has another property you might be interested in, but whatever notes I get from the call, I put them right here and then I save them at the end. And if I'm on a limited budget, that's exactly what I do. Okay, so the system is developed to be fairly intuitive. Um, again, searched my save leads, my account, tasks, marketing tools, and contact. And other than that, it's digging through your leads and using the more filters tab to get. To exactly what it is you're looking for okay um, now why don't we go back here and see if I can get to some of your questions now it's time for your questions so I'm gonna dig down now's the time to go ahead and put your questions in here it is 856 uh, we said we take about an hour for this call we have four minutes left but we're gonna go over a little bit just to see if we can get to as many questions as possible um, I see a bunch came in here, but I'm going to try to scroll to the top uh, when you guys started putting them out early. Uh, so just give me a second here as I read them. I'm going to try to read them and then uh, get to your answers. Lots of people on the call. Lots of questions here. Let's see here. And hopefully you guys have found this valuable and interesting so far, and hopefully you've gotten some really good nuggets from it. If you have, please let me know. Um, I, I, I always open to to uh, constructive criticism, but also I, if, if you did get a lot from this, I'd like to hear that too. Uh, hopefully it was a good use of your Wednesday night. I know I had fun doing it. All right, Tom had a question. Acronym NCOA. Um, NCOA stands for National Change of Address. So uh, you know how when you um, when you move from one house to another, you go to the mailbox or the post office and you have to like fill out a form that says stop mailing my stuff from house X and start mailing it to house Y. And it'll last for a couple of years uh, or a year or so. Um, that's filing a national change of address form. And when that happens, um, it, it allows the uh, people to find you, you know, because they know where your next address is, your forwarding address, so to speak. Um, so if there's national change of address within the system, we're able to show it to you. Just reading through the questions here. What is the ideal time to call homeowners with phone numbers? That is a great question. Um, as a marketing person, I test this kind of stuff all the time and one of the things that I've found is, you know, no matter whether you're calling a vacant homeowner or you're call, you know, calling to sell someone insurance or try to get them to come in and do an oil change in their car, you've got to call them when they're home. Um, so if you're calling your vacant houses at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 
you're probably not going to get a huge response and you're going to leave a message and they're never going to call you back because that's what they do. Um, but if you call around 6 to 7 p.m., uh, you, whatever time zone they're in, you're usually going to get a pretty good response 8 in the morning. That's worked well, 7, 8 in the morning. Um, here's my caveat to that. If you call my house at 7 in the morning, you're not going to get a very happy Josh answering the phone. I mean, I'm, I've been up and worked out and I'm planning my day by that point. And my kids are just rolling out of bed and, you know, that's not going to, you're not going to get a happy Josh. So I tend to stay around the times where people are getting going nationally, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, when people are done with dinner, six, seven at night. Um, I've heard of people doing like nine o'clock at night calls. I'm not wild about that, but you know what? You've got to test it out and see what works for you. However, I'd avoid, I'd, I'd avoid the middle of the day. I'd try to do it five, six, seven, eight o'clock at night at the latest, uh, eight o'clock. Uh, and see uh, how your results go there, Gene. Uh, had a good question. This one's from Canada. Uh, said, Josh, are you suggesting that you look at each vacant house AP lead and determine if it fits your criteria before uh, downloading or deciding to mail? I'm guessing is what you mean there. Um, and I'm suggesting you do that if you're on a really, really tight budget. So, um, if you have five hundred to a thousand dollars a month in, as your marketing budget, you know you're not going to be able to look at every single lead because you're going to have a bunch of leads that are going to um, be in the in the your targeted list based on that amount of budget, right? Uh, but if I have a hundred dollars to spend, then yeah, I'm going to spend the 30, 45 minutes it takes to pre-vet my leads, so to speak, so that I can go through there and do that. I hope that answers your question, Ian. Um, and and great. Great follow-up, by the way. Um, let's see here. This question says, uh, so if cameras lending me money, then the private lenders in the area could be useful to the cash buyers I can sell to. Uh, and I, I, I think I understand what you're saying there. Um, and what I would say is this, anytime I'm looking to invest in an area and I see that there are cash buyers in the area and private, private lenders in the area, I get excited as an investor because it's, it's like, I know if I'm going to go hunting and I look at a map and I can see on the map that there's deer in the area and turkey in the area, then I know I have a better chance of sealing the deal when I get out there, right? And that's sort of the same thing. If I know there's private lenders and I know there's cash buyers, I know there's action in the area, I'm much more likely to have a successful hunt, if that makes sense. Um, let's keep going here. Do I suggest weekly mailing to the same list? This is a great question. I get a lot um, at events. And what I suggest is a marketing plan. And that plan usually lasts for eight to 10 weeks. Uh, and during that plan, what I'll do is I'll hit the same list multiple times, but it doesn't have to be the same list each week. So what you might do is envision three lists in your head, one's A, one's B, one's C, and I might go after list A week one, list B week two, list three week C, <laughs> list C week three, sorry about that. Uh, and then on week four, I restart again, okay? But it doesn't have to be every three weeks, it could be every two. I think every week is a little aggressive uh, and you're not gonna see the return for the amount of money spent there on that um, really jump up or anything. I, at least nothing in my experience, I've never seen that happen. Every two to three weeks, I want to hit them uh, a good lead, uh, and for eight to ten weeks. So again, you know, the rule of seven is that you have to hit a lead seven times before they'll fully understand that you're there and you're there for them uh, before they'll pay attention. And uh, so you got to hit them over and over and over again. Are yellow letters in the system? Great question. Right now they're not, uh, but we are working on that. You know, that's a function of the mail house that we work with being able to handle the yellow letter template. Um, and you can edit your letter templates to be very simple like a yellow letter, um, but we have not done that yet. That's a great question. Is there a way to uh, make a postcard that doesn't say I'm not a realtor because I am. And that is a great suggestion. In fact, um, if you wouldn't mind going and submitting that suggestion, uh, that'll get on our radar. We'll create a real realtor friendly postcard for you. I like that. 
when will the heat map be available? Uh, it already is. Um, it's available now, right now, today. Uh, we're actually going to be making some tweaks to it. Uh, Cam and I were using it last week. And uh, when using it, uh, we were both like, oh, it'd be cool if it did this instead or this a little differently. So you're going to notice if you've been in there using it that in the next couple of weeks, it's going to be tweaked a little. But again, that's us constantly improving, trying to constantly make the service better for you. Um, Megan Rodney, that's it's already available. It's in there. Um, just go to marketing tools and at the bottom you'll see heat maps. Where are the scripts? Uh, scripts are within the marketing tools. Um, the phone scripts, I'm assuming he means. <laughs> he said thanks right afterwards, so he must have gotten that during my presentation. Had a comment said I was talking too fast. Please slow down. I apologize for that. I do get excited. Uh, will I put this on the web page to go back to for reference? You can bet your bottom dollar, Francis. We are going to put this on the website so you can watch it over and over and over again. And for the gentleman who thought I talked too fast, uh, hopefully that'll be a, a saving grace for you there. Um, and yeah, we're going to put it up on the web so you can see it over and over. How do, you, how do you add vacant houses into the system if it's not appearing in the vacant house data feed? Um, that is a feature that we're currently working on, Richard, um, and that you'll see that come very soon. Uh, it's been something that, uh, that we've wanted uh, personally in the, in the last couple months. So um, our, 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 our programmers are working on that right now. Can a VA sort through leads to see which ones are motivated sellers? The answer to that is yes. Um, in fact, that's something that, you know, in, when you're in business, you have to really focus on the two or three or four things that are your biggest sort of primary revenue drivers, right? And one of those probably isn't um, sorting through leads to see if they're motivated. However, if you can create a short video, you can use services like Jing, J-I-N-G, J-I-N-G dot com. Uh, where you can create short five-minute videos for free from your desktop without having to download any kind of crazy software. Uh, and you can use Jing and create a short Jing video showing, you know, basically doing a tutorial. Uh, here's how to use uh, the Bacon House data feed. In fact, let them log in and look at the video I'm doing now. Let them look at this video and learn the system. Uh, and then have them sort through it for you, absolutely. If you can find a VA who you can trust that with, I'd say more power to you. Contact us anytime. 607-527-6097, Monday through Friday, 8 to 8, 8.30 to 8 p.m. Eastern or info at realestatewealthnetwork.com. The, the bottom line is we want to see you succeed. You know, when we when you buy a product from us, when you come to our events, when you, when you, um, you know, get on a webinar, we really do uh, think of you as family, you know, and we want you to succeed. We're here for you, but we can't answer questions we don't know exist. So, if you have questions, give us a call. Let us help you out. Let us help you take your business to the next level. We're excited to do it for you. And uh, again, I really hope you've gotten a lot out of tonight's call. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Until then, you have a great night. And uh, here's to your profits.